everyone, and welcome back to another episode of non Sequitur Nerds. Tonight, we're going to need to watch out for sand, because it gets everywhere. Uh, we're talking Sandstorm Requiem, the new Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. That is a mouthful expansion pack. As always, I am Tim, going by my buddy Ian. How's it going, bud? Hey, it's going fantastically. It's been a uh, awesome week, uh, holiday week, uh, as we're recording this. So, yeah, busy one. you know, some of us are coming down off of food comas. Uh, so much food. Dude, like, uh, we still we still have so many leftovers. <laughs> We're like, you know what, we'll cook light, because it's just going to be us and the kids. You know, we'll cook small, and we still had way too much food. Yay, America. You're right. Uh, you know, American, big old American Thanksgiving. Right. Um, anyway, but, uh, yeah, no, things are going well. Uh, holiday weekend, so it's been, it was a short work week. I think you were off work this week, I believe. Uh, not, uh, yeah, yeah. Involuntarily, I think. Yep. Um. And no, I'm not alluding to Tim being fired. In no, 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 no. Factory and the the factory was closed for the week. Yep. Uh, due to a shortage of parts. Uh, thank you, uh, Corona. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, so moving on to a much more happy subject, I think. Uh, tonight. It depends uh, on who you mention... ask. <laughs> yeah, depends on who you ask. Tonight, I'm going to. Uh, uh, tonight, we, uh, not just me. Yeah. Uh, bye, bye, guys. I'll... Uh, I, I'm the important one. Um, <laughs> I hate you so much. Tonight, uh, we are going to be talking about uh, Fantasy Star Online 2 uh, New Genesis, uh, specifically the road to the Sandstorm Requiem. Uh, it's basically one of those like, hey, it's been four months. How is the how is the game doing now? Right. So, um, as we uh, as we uh, delve into uh, this um, review, uh, so to speak, uh, you know, we more, can just kind of Preview, preview review, review, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, preview review. That's that's a good that's a good term. I wonder if we can look that up, see if anybody coined it. it. Probably. Maybe we can copyright it. Um, <laughs> you know, anyway, somebody's first, already got that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, NGS. Um, where we're at now? So it's been four months. Um, I think four, five months. Yeah, right around five there. months. Yeah, five months. Uh, it's been five months. Um, where's the game at now? Well, to be frank. About, kind of bare. about where uh, it was five months ago. I mean, yeah, they, about they, where they it was. Have, they have added some new things. I mean, they've had a couple new classes come out. Um, they've had seasonal events, which are hit or miss. I mean, a lot of people like it because it's something new to do, but people that don't like it don't like it because every seasonal event has literally been the same thing with a different skin over it. Um, I mean, they've added that. They've added repeatable dungeons you can farm triggers for, uh, similar to how they had it in. Uh, base PSO2, but not as many of them as there are in base PSO2. Right now, we've got the uh, yellow triggers and purple triggers. Is That's what I'm always going to call them. I don't care if they have an official name. Um, one of them I sees you they fighting... Really just yellow and purple. They, like, they, they have a name, I think. Uh, at least the, the dungeon has a name, but they're yellow and purple triggers. Uh, yellow ones see you fighting, you know, rooms full of enemies, going to the end, and you get, you know, a good amount of XP, but the big thing are you get uh, weapons and armors you can use for enhancement fodder, and they're actually pretty good enhancement fodder. Uh, the purple ones see you fighting waves of gigantics, uh, one right after the other. I haven't gotten a chance to uh, do that one myself yet, but it is something that you can do. Crap. You all right there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> holy cow. Uh, sorry about that, folks. I just randomly decided uh, tonight was the night I was going to die. I mean, I do uh, stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, so um, content's been pretty barren. They've, uh, you know, like Tim said, they've tried releasing some new things here and there. Uh, lots of cosmetics, classes, though. <laughs> lots of cosmetics. That's kind of where they're sticking to what they know, is lots of cosmetics. They're yeah. kind of mixing and matching, too, between, like, base PSO2 cosmetics and new Genesis cosmetics. You know, they're kind of all over the place. There's some that work well with, like, the new the new body types, and whatnot, like the accessories and, uh, you know, like the body paints and those kind of things. Those those work just fine. But the the set, the, the clothing, the set wears and those kind of things, when they kind of push you to the, the old, um, you know, body types, it can kind of look a little weird sometimes. Well, so they, they haven't done as many of those. They've done a lot of what are called renewal tickets, which are they've taken some of the old costumes that people liked or some that for us in global never got released 
they're upscaling them and they're making them work with the new Genesis body types, which is still good. Only problem I have, and like anybody that that knows me uh, in game, uh, quick shout out to Marsh and Vic because I know they listen to us now. Um, uh, I play a larger character. I mean, he's just a wall of muscle. A problem. Larger, that... You are the largest. I, yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know. Uh, what's her name? Deer that I see every so often. <laughs> And I think Dante might be bigger in a different way. Because <laughs> he has all kinds of stuff coming off of him. So shout out to Dante, too. Anyway, um, a lot of the outfits, especially things that have stuff around the waist, do this weird thing where they flare out. Like, even if they were laying flat, they wouldn't be clipping against anything. But the way they have the geometry set up for characters, especially larger characters, stuff always flares out around the hips. So, it, like, a lot of stuff, it looks like I have a freaking hula hoop an invisible hula hoop around my waist with everything laying on that instead of laying like against my body. It's really weird. That's something I, I still hope that they fix. So, I mean, that's just a mi minor gripe, you know, you know, fashion wise anyway. And if you think about it though, there's not a lot, there's not a lot else to do other than the fashion stuff. Like, yeah, you could go back to, to the base PSO two game. I mean, they've obviously really shrunk down that. Yeah. That, uh, that game. I mean, there's what, six, Six lobbies now I think you can be in in the base PSO Yeah, two. instead of before, there were close to 50. Yeah, 40, 50. Um, yeah, so they really kind of shrunk that down. Um, the content definitely feels like aged uh, and dated when you go back and through go through there. And, and yeah. it was kind of pretty aged and dated before because it was all very linear. Like it was well, very yeah. much a procedurally generated linear dungeons. You had... You really all, I mean, you had a Z axis of movement, but it did it was, really. It was mainly for like jumping really over rocks. Anything. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and, so and, no... to, and to be fair, like, you know, for us, new, uh, you know, base game was a new thing. That, that's a 10 year old game at this point when it first launched in Japan, you know, ages ago. Um, right. I mean, with, with, at least with New Genesis, we're getting the stuff, you know, day and date with Japan. So, like, as far as content updates, stuff like that. We're on par. Global is on par with the Japanese release. Um, so, I mean, there is that. So, we're not going to be sitting there, you know, having people that use VPNs or whatnot to play the game, that know the ins and outs of everything, jumping into the global version and, you know, having to explain everything to everybody, which, I mean, was, was nice at some points. But there is also something nice about going into a game, not knowing anything about it, everybody's on a level playing field, and trying to figure it out, you know? But I mean, right. then again, at this point, there's been so little new content in New Genesis that I think everybody that's been playing any amount of time has everything figured out at this point. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot really left to discover. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we discovered Kick-Ass Cave during the closed beta yeah, test. We did. Yeah, that, we did. I mean, that was like the major thing that we found. Uh, and then it, you know, I, I think I've back probably been through there since since launch like um, like i go in there if i have to gather uh minerals in that area i just immediately go there because i know i can knock it out in five seconds but uh, yeah i say as far as other new stuff um they they did also bring back mission pass which was kind of nice because i mean that gave you beyond the meseta did give you a reason to do your dailies again and your weeklies um i mean some of the content like there's always one or two cosmetic pieces on there that I'm like, okay, you know, I, I know I'll use that. Uh, like the most recent mission pass, there's that, I think they call it camouflage cape. Um, yeah. I wear that pretty much all the time now because I think it looks awesome. Um, and bo they've only had, uh, this is season two on the mission pass. So there's only been two so far. Each one, the tier 30 has been a mag, which is kind of cool. Um, they did also bring back mag forms from the base game and any of the ones you unlocked in base came forward. So you can use them again. Mags still have no purpose other than effectively another cosmetic. Uh, once you've found all the Ryuka devices and you found all the cocoons and everything, it doesn't do anything right now. They, they did say in one of their uh, updates that they are looking in to see what kind of functionality people might want and what ways they can make the mag useful. Primarily, though, it is a, it's an extra little cosmetic buddy. Um, I mean, if they wanted to make it useful, what they would probably should do is look at being able to turn it into kind of like a scouter. Um, right. It actually, like, like you can program it to ping based upon, like, certain materials or certain things that you're looking for. That would be cool. Kind like, of like... Um, it, would, it would mark on your map, you like, if you're looking for Trinite. It would mark near right. Trinite. Near. See, that that I think would be great. I mean, even if it doesn't... Like, I, think marking, I think marking it would be too cheap of a thing to do. 
if anything, I think what they should do is um, have it ping like it does when you're nearby a, a cocoon or a tower or something like that. Like it does that little sonar blip. Yeah. And okay, it kind of gives you a direction. Because at least that way it makes it less easy to find stuff. Right. Like it's not it's not quite easy mode at that point. Which mo I mean, at, you hit level twenty, most of this game is basically easy mode I at mean, that yeah. point. Like you can, uh, with the exception of gigantics, which I think you could still technically do. Like you pretty much can solo anything yeah. in this game at level yep. twenty. Um, I mean, so some things are harder other, than others, but yeah, you can. Right. The other thing with the mission pass though is it only costs a hundred SG uh, or star gems. Dude, and they give um, SG out like it's freaking candy on Halloween. Well, yeah, and. and uh, not to mention every week whenever they do a maintenance, they wind up screwing something up, and so then yeah. they give away free SG because yeah. they screwed something up. Yep. Well, so, like, I, I think, didn't didn't this week we got 100 SG for, a, like, some maintenance issue? I think we got, like, two or 300 <laughs> SG. So, like, I, hey, there, there's, like, there's I'm three pretty months sure I logged of your mission in a, pass. Right, I'm pretty sure I logged in, there was, like, three camp, <laughs> or three, sorry, items uh, yeah. in the, the campaign pass. I so, mean, which, um, which, which is nice, and I mean, they effectively are rewarding people who are actively playing, which which is kind of nice. I mean, um, they uh, say the the SG tickets. Like, I can't think of the last time I even bought an SG like cosmetic ticket because you get that free one every day, and by the time they cycle it out, at least these first couple, by the time it's cycled out, I either have literally everything on that list. Or everything I want. And so either way, it's like, I keep saying every every time they roll out a new one, yeah, I'm not going to spend any SG on it. I'll just do the free daily poll, and then if there's anything at the end I don't have, I'll do some rolls and, and get it that way. I have yet to actually right. do that. But I mean, again, I, that's that's not me knocking the game. It's nice because you do get those free SG rolls, so your SG that you do get either from, you know, if you do purchase some in-game, or if you earn it through in-game events, you know, giveaways, stuff like that, you have something to use it on other than the cosmetics. You can use it to pay for your miss mission pass. Um, I think a material storage is SG, if I remember correctly. Yeah, material Which, storage. That is, is SG. that is yeah. nice to to spend the SG on. Let me. That is that is a necessity. Yeah, you pretty much need it's it's a necessity. And yeah. and kind of going into one of my gripes about the game right now is just inventory and like the amount of crap that you get. Like, you know, in in base it was, you know, you you'd pick up stuff, but you would basically like fodder almost all of it because it was useless right like there was no point to any of it with the exception of you know like some of the higher higher tier like 12 13 star things and then they had the swap shop that you could you know trade in for you know uh ex cubes or you know those kind of things battle uh, not battle but uh, you know coins and that kind of stuff yep. um now i mean you have it's, a swap it's, it's not that exchange great exchange shop but it's it's basically useless like the he'd I say the the only thing I, I've really used a swap shop on recently is they did introduce another tier of scratch tickets called special scratches, which are cool. You you earn the there there is no paid currency for this one, which a lot of people were really right. happy about. You earn the tickets just by doing your dailies, your weeklies, special in game events, um, and you get stuff off the special scratch. You can also get mission passes, which uh, mission pass tokens or whatever they're called. Yeah, and and mission pass badges. I there think we go. Pa yeah, there we go. And I know a lot of people said, you know, hey, save those, bank them, because later in the game, if it's anything like base PSO, you're gonna need these for high tier stuff. Versus me going, I got ten, I can buy a lottery ticket, <laughs> and right. that's what I've been doing with them. So that's mainly what I'm using the swap shop for. Um, there have been rumblings online that they are going to be tweaking that up and actually adding more stuff on there. Um, which that'd be interesting to see what they do, but. I mean, we, we, we've talked a lot about, you know, the game where, where it is. The new expansion comes out December 15th. Um, it's officially yep. called, if, you, if those of you watching the video, Sandstorm Requiem, which is cool that they're, they're kind of taking, they're kind of taking a page from other MMOs where it's not just the next expansion, you know, or, an, you know, the chapter two. They're actually giving it a name, making it its own thing, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, I didn't I mean, think generally that MMOs, that... when they have an expansion, they have a name on them. Exactly. Um, but I mean, like, like for base PSO, it was chapter one, chapter two. I mean, the chapters had names, but it wasn't really broadcast. It, yeah, it wasn't really anything more than chapter one, chapter two. With this, right. they're taking more of a modern approach to it, which is kind of nice. A uh, couple big things they're adding. Um, they are obviously adding a a whole new region of the game, uh, which which is nice. It's gonna be not. It's a desert region, 
So it's going to be nice to get out of, like, the forested plains, woodlands area. At least get, you know, some different scenery. Um, and, of course, that comes with a whole new, like, central hub. Oh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Uh, Rutum City, or Retum, Rutum. I've heard it pronounced a bunch of different ways. R-E-T-E-M. I say Rutum City. Um, it's going to be your new central hub. It's going to be very similar to how Central City is now. Uh, all your shops are going to be there. That's going to be like your main player hub there. Uh, that's where a lot of the story is going to start off at. Um, so again, I mean, it's it's it seems like more of the same, but at the same time, it is quite a bit different. So I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to it myself. Um, I mean, that's just some of the the things they're adding. Uh, what what else are they adding, Ian? Well. Before we move on to that, what one of the things that I'm kind of being, uh, you know, I I'm the the eternal cynic, right? You know, yes, I'm, you are. I'm always the I'm always the foil to Tim's uh, eternal optimism. It's I'm true. usually the eternal I, I, cynic. I try to be optimistic about stuff, especially I, like obviously, you know, if you guys can't tell, this is our like third or fourth episode just on New Genesis. We really like the game. I don't want to see it fail. Like whenever I go on on the the New Genesis Reddit. It always bums me out when I see people go, why are people still playing this game? It's like, well, maybe people like something you don't. I mean, like, yes, like, I will fully admit there is not much to do in this game, but I still log on pretty much every single day, at least to do my dailies, but also log and on. And to get your free, yeah. and to get your free scratch. Well, yeah, I gotta get my free scratch, man. Um, yeah. So, like, I don't want to see this game fail, but I will also be the first to admit, right now, content-wise, there's not much to do. It is mainly a social experience right now but anyway sorry right. go ahead anyway so yeah being the eternal cynic i'm kind of uh trepidatious about um sandstorm requiem because what and the only reason i say that is i'm fearful that we're gonna get another launch where it's gonna be you know in your face like all this really cool stuff really awesome and it's a week and a half worth of content right yeah I mean, for me, again, I am the completionist whore that I've mentioned before. So <laughs> yep. they're raising the level cap to 30. Uh, uh, on 30 all 35. Stuff, on all, oh, 35. Yep. So now I have 15 levels for how many subclasses are there now? Eight, uh, see, one, eight classes now? Eight, yep. Yeah, so now there are eight classes uh, for me to level up 15 additional levels. Um, the thing is, though, I've also been banking a metric butt ton of like exp boosters and stuff like that i literally don't use them Neither so I every just, time i get one it just immediately goes into my bank so well, i mean that's I 120 probably... total levels of content ian it is but it's also <laughs> 120 total levels of hopefully not just me grinding like enemies right. and pse bursts um of content like i hope there's actually like some story behind some of the classes some now what one thing you know they, they, some they... additional content you know because they right. had and not to cut you off but you know they they had the these the main characters that they introduced ina and Mar marin marin yep. man manon 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 james yeah. buchanan uh, yes exactly um, they had these characters that they introduced and you know they had some stuff that you did with them but then yeah. they very quickly like just right. up and like you you can't even see them like they're not their characters like aren't even in the that's yeah, that's true. in the game anywhere like they're like it, even if they're like npcs were like wandering around town even that would like would be something neat like even if they're like not even in town even if they're like hanging out in, like hq or whatever but, yeah you're right apart from the cutscenes, you know or if you have to talk to them to initiate a story they're just they're just gone but um, speaking of yes. uh, characters walking around town, uh, let's talk about the Nemesis characters uh, who are oh, Wakes. And I don't remember the chick's <laughs> name, but the people that they are NPCs Dude. that walk around town. And every time they bump into you, they go, hey, or and yo. They, and they just stop there and stare at you. Yes. So, like, I, I wish there was a little more life to the NPCs. Beyond just walking around, stopping and staring at you awkwardly. Um, yeah, because they're bloody say, annoying. Right. One thing that uh, I, I was going to say this earlier when we were talking about the the level caps getting increased. Right now in the base and base new Genesis, your subclasses will only gain XP up to level 15. After that, they have to be a main class to gain XP. Now I know in base PSO, as the level cap would increase, the max level of your subclass 
would increase. So I'm wondering if it's if that's maybe going to increase to like maybe a maximum of 20 or 25 as a subclass. Um, well, because five like, below, so I would, that's true. So maybe, I maybe mean, they 20, could 25 it, they to could 30. Keep it, yeah, they could keep it proportional, but it kind of is a kick in the the cojones if you only do if you do like only like 20 or 25 because that's right. like a pretty big gap. And considering that's that true. the battle point system is pretty big in like what and content broken. you're eligible and for. Well, yeah, Dude, yeah, okay, you're 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 talking to me. Like I've spent I've spent millions of Meseta like going. I'm going to try something new with this completely different weapon just to see if it works or not to, to see. All right. Well, hey, I get three more BP if I use this sword with this on it instead of this other sword with this on it. But if I put that augment on this first sword, that actually gives me two lower BP versus if I put that augment on this one, it gives me five total a higher BP. So it's, it's yeah, I, I like to fiddle around with the stats, but the BP system is broken. Um, Meanwhile, I I have fourteen ten BP, and that seems to be about as high as I can get it. And I just keep putting like base level one augments on my shit because I don't care. Uh, uh, fourteen fourteen sixty three. There's, 1463. there's <laughs> that's, that's the highest that I can I, get. There's nothing that I can like. There's nothing that that requires me. I mean, yeah, yeah I could go and do gigantics, but. It well, doesn't isn't really it like, serve me any purpose. Isn't it like like the, the highest requirement you need right now is for a uh, mining base? That's what uh, one thousand two hundred forty three BP, I think. So like me me being at you know fourteen sixty some, I'm well over capped for stuff right now. But um, so yeah, I'm gonna be interested to see what the level cap on uh, your subclasses if it does get an if it doesn't get an increase, that's gonna be a pain in the butt. If it does get an increase, I can just do what I did for my last couple ones, is level them up to the point where I can't get XP from them, put them as my main, but put my uh, fighter as my sub, and pretty much yep. just play it as a fighter who is maining as you know a tector or a force or a gunner, any of those classes that I don't really play. Um, yep. Yeah, like, and, like, I, I've tried every class now, much like Ian here, I have every class up to level 20 right now. There are some that I could see maybe trying, like like uh, fighter and hunter, my my two mains. I could maybe see uh, bouncer, maybe depending on like if they add more to that. I don't in the know. Future. Ulrich with jet boots just seems. I know. Weird. I know. <laughs> well, Ulrich is a gunner with that weird glitch where his his uh, I don't know his ranger where his shoulder and arm would like jut way out past his body and would like <laughs> he was some Slenderman crap. It was weird. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be interested to see how they handle that. Um, and like you had mentioned, BP as well. I'm gonna be curious how much it's going to start scaling up in this new thing. Um, as far as like any new urgent quests that may pop up, new story missions that obviously are going to be there. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see what the BP requirements are gonna be. That I've heard rumblings around online that. Uh, outside of the story, four, or 1,500 even is going to be when you start going to do urgent quests and things like that. To my mm -hmm. knowledge, I did some searching earlier. I didn't see anything confirming that, but people you know, have heard that 1,500 is going to be the starting number now, which really, I mean, you're at, four, uh, what you say, 1,410? Yeah. So, I mean, really, that's not too unachievable because I imagine there will be new weapon types. There will probably be new augments. That's not going to be an unachievable goal for you to quickly get to 1500. The other component of this being that, as I mentioned, inventory space is a problem for me right now because I am sitting on hundreds of fodder weapons. I started doing that. The I same. can just that I can just shard and and you know upgrade to either upgrade my current gear to the next level or if they're going to introduce additional star weapons like you know five six seven star weapons I, I imagine they'll probably at the minimum bring in five star weapons at minimum i would hope they i my guess is if they're going to jump us 15 levels i would think they're going to do well because i mean what did they end pso2 what did they end base with? Oh, was it like, like 15, 15 star i think so I mean, yeah, that, that was star weapons. eight, seven, eight chapters. No, I think it was only six. Was it six? Six or yeah, seven. I think it's six. It's, I think it's, it's like, six. it's been forever since I've done the story of base. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you figure, yeah, so probably five and six star here. The next expansion will be seven and eight. Yeah, I mean, okay. I could, And, like, maybe a one, one or two chapters will have three tiers. But um, a lot of this stuff is 
is speculation at this point, because while we know it's coming, and it's coming here in two weeks, let's call it pretty much what it is, a um, little over two weeks, a lot of the stuff, we, like, we know there's a new region, we know there's going to be a new story, new uh, level caps, um, all the classes are gaining uh, a new skill. Beyond that, we don't... And they showed off a few new enemies, but, like, beyond that, like, mechanically, we don't know if there's going to be new urgent quests, we don't know if they are putting in higher star-tiered weapons, or even more weapons, for that matter, even if they're four-star. A lot of the stuff we don't know, and I feel like, on one hand, Sega's kind of playing it close to the chest, because... They've made it pretty apparent during their, their last couple live streams that they hear what the community's saying. They understand how frustrated people are, and the, the dev team has actually gone to the higher-ups and said, has expressed these concerns as well. Of, you know, look, this is what people are saying about the game. Um, so I do think it is Sega playing it a little close to the chest because they don't want to they don't want to have happen what happened with the launch of New Genesis. They don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. I mean, Ian, you, you've you've worked in a service industry before you always under promise and over deliver you tell them you're going to give them the bare minimum and then you do three times that you don't tell them you're going to give them three times that and then do the bare minimum you don't do that so i think maybe right. I, the optimist in me is hoping that that's what sega's doing is trying to kind of temper people's expectations so that the things that are ready and do work they can put in day one and people can be oh wow they didn't talk about this but that's in the game that's really cool um so I'm I'm hoping that's the case. I'm hoping it's not just a bare bones, you know, hour and a half long set of of story missions, and we get to walk around a desert. I mean, admittedly, I know a few people. Uh, shout out to one of our other friends, Fran, who are going to be doing a lot of photo shot, uh, photo shoots in the desert and whatnot. Uh, there are some, from what they've shown off, there are some real like, nice looking locales. Desert on the horse with no name. Exactly. Um. Um. Somebody, somebody, I was talking, and it may have, may have been you actually, had suggested that once they open up, you know, one or two more regions, yeah, we have the teleporters, which give you instant access, but somebody suggested mounts. And I was talking to somebody else about it, and they said, well, why do you need mounts in a world with instant teleportation? And I'm like, well, clearly you've never played Final Fantasy XIV, which actually will segue us into our episode next week. We'll uh, give you a little teaser there. But even in a game like that, there is the crystals you can teleport to, just like the Ryuker devices, and they still have Yeah, but there's also barren wasteland between everything else that you yeah. have to go to. Yep. Which and is... walking sucks. Even though in yeah. this game, I don't know anybody that actually walks. Everyone just photon dashes. Yeah, well, um, I, I still use my freaking Naruto run, because nothing's more scary than... Nothing's scarier than an 8-foot, you know, 600-pound wall of muscle Naruto running straight at you. Um... Right. <laughs> well, I also play a female character who Nar Naruto runs, and for those that ask, I play a female character because I like the female characters. I mean, if there I'm going to play... I'm, I'm going to dedicate as many hours to this game... As I have, I'm going to at least play a character that is appealing to look at, rather than staring at Dude Butt the entire time. Ulrich's Dude Butt is pure muscle. I mean, he, he doesn't have a butt. It's just a muscle. It's just, it's just two more muscles. We're not sure what ones, though. They're just there. Well, it's the gluteus maximus. It maximus. It's the glutes. The it's, glutes. It's the glutes. Every, everything. It's Ulrich Maximus. It's, <laughs> that's, Ulrich his, maximus. that's his Roman name. It's, <laughs> Ulrich, it's maximus. Ulrich Maximus. <laughs> It's true. But, um, yeah, so, you know, um, I I'm hopeful. I really do. Because I do, again, I enjoy this game. I'm not as social as Tim is. I don't really talk yeah. to any of the, you know, uh, people outside of our alliance uh, and that kind of stuff. I kind of li listen in on the chat. Um, a lot of it is just really too edge lordy for me. It's like if I'm going to sit here on this game, like listening to chat for two hours, well, it's, it's, yeah, it I needs mean, to be a lot less edge lord for me yeah. to pay attention and to. Not, not not our alliance. We're talking, we're talking like city common chat. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's uh for those of you who've played a while, it's uh Freeport levels of area of comments chat at sometimes. <laughs> those oh, of you God. that get that reference, um, uh, it's, those it's, of you it's that get it's that reference chat. are probably older than Marshy. That, well, um, well, anyway, yes. now, Ian, it's it's Baron's chat. Oh God, it's <laughs> Baron's chat all over again. Uh, 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 and again, those people that get that reference are probably older than Marshy. We love you, Marsh. We love you. Anyway. Uh, uh, yes, so... Um, again, I'm looking forward to it. I'm interested in seeing what they what they have. I'm interested in seeing if they're releasing, you know, what kind of new classes they're releasing, because, you know, they do have the Summoner still to, to come yep, out. Which is... From base. Early next year. Yeah, Summoner is one that... 
I know. Whoa. Sorry, my video like completely uh went down there for a second. Uh, like we just disappeared and reappeared. We teleported um to the exact same we spot. Used We're, not very good device. At it. We're not very good at it. Um I know the uh the missus is looking forward to summoner because that's actually what she made in base game. Um and she you know, she made the comment something along the lines of with all the other classes being so fast paced, she said summoners were like really, really slow because you stood back, had your pet do all your stuff, and it was she said it was it was fun because she liked having the pet, but it was it was tedious at times. So she's actually looking forward to it to see how they update that. And how because all the other classes have all felt like super fast paced, super action oriented. So that'd be interesting to see how a class like that works in the game. I mean, again, that's that's beyond this year yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's it's 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 gonna be interesting. Like I said, it comes out in a little over two weeks for us. Um, it is just like the base game. It is completely free. Um, you know, excluding any microtransactions you may uh, partake in. But it's completely free. So I mean, there's if you are somebody who's kind of been on the fence about it, definitely check it out. Uh, December fifteenth is when it comes out. If you are a returning player, you know, definitely come back to the world. Uh, we need more people in Block 1 that aren't going to be Edgelords. Um, <laughs> although I have noticed lately, like, even when the Edgelords are on, it's a lot more subdued than what it was. I think, and this is something that's happened since our last review as well, uh, Sega kind of started laying down the ban hammer. Hard. Pretty hardcore. Like, like some of the more, some of the more edgy. Yeah, I say Ulrich was impressed how hard they were laying the hammer down. Right. Um, some of the some of the more edgy edge lords uh, were actually put on chat bands. So basically, you just saw them standing around and they couldn't spout any of their nonsense. So it got, uh, because it got nice and quiet it, for a while. Right. It was basically Sega going, "You get one warning." Uh you know, uh, and that was it. But yeah. yeah, they they did lay down the band hammer. And one of the things that reminded me of, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but even in the busier blocks, I don't see bots anymore. I don't see yeah. bot spammers anymore. Well, I'm noticing, like, like you and I typically hang out in block one, which is, is one of the more po uh, populated blocks. I'm wondering if, it, if it's partially that, but partially also because that block is almost, typically, almost consistently full or pretty close to it, and the bots just can't get on. But I, I'd, like I mean, to th I'd like to think, because it did, now that you mention it, it did start happening around the time Sega was laying down the ban hammers. So I'm wondering if, if they finally found a way to circumvent that, and the bots just moved on. To whatever other game yeah i mean they just the 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 bots have i mean again largely gone away i can't so even think the, of the last time i saw one honestly now that you mention it yeah i mean they've been again pretty well gone um which yeah. is perfectly fine with me yes. i'm more Although than that, happy <laughs> that was part of my was... that was part of my daily tasks was all right log in get some food feed a mag block three bots go gather materials <laughs> I didn't get well, yeah, rewarded block for three it. bots and report them. Uh, yes, block uh, and report. Because again, remember that was one of the problems was you couldn't, you could no longer like it was proximity player lists now. So it was like, who was within your proximity? Oh, that that and, is something. And the bots else they would added, go and yeah. like hide. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, now, now area know. area chat is now proximity chat. So if you were in like the middle of the city, and you are just inundated with people's conversations that you really don't care to hear about. You can go just down the road or over to the either the cafe, uh, either of the two cafes that have a purpose now, and it's quiet over there. It will still pop up the three little dots like it did in base PSO when somebody was too far away but talking, but you won't actually have to worry about their chat, and you can now sit in the chairs. <laughs> I think that's everything they added. The chairs were a big thing for me, all right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they do need to add... So, I mean, let's talk about some quality of life things that they yes. could add. Um, yeah. So, a casino. obviously, better casino, um, <laughs> some better cosmetics. And what I mean there is some more variety. Like, right yes. now, the current Scratch is basically, like, Japanese standard, you know, like, traditional dress and garb and stuff like that. You know, like, yukata and, you know, some frilly things and stuff like that. Now, now, which now, is it, cute, it, but yeah, it so, also... And looks... admittedly, both of us are, wear, are currently wearing an outfit in-game from the new Scratch. Right, so, admittedly. Yep. But again, it's also it also looks a lot like some of the older scratches. Yeah. Like yep. so they're you know, they've they've kind of reused a lot of the same stuff. So it's kinda of like Or at least the same design sense behind it. Not it's not necessarily like using the in game assets, but like they have multiple dresses that you can tell were probably all designed by the same guy who only like you know, or guy or gal or whatever that have the same fashion right. sense. So, right. So they, they, so they do need to vary it up. I mean, 
Again, base game had a lot more cosmetic options. Again, 10-year-old game. There were a lot more. Um, but no, I agree with you on there. There needs to be more variety. Um, like, I, for the longest time, used the, as I call it, the Garoa outfit, which makes you even bigger than your normal body size. I wish there were more outfits like that that would change your, your base design, just to kind of fluctuate it, because, like, I mean, yeah, there is a lot more customization in this game, but everybody seems to kind of pick a general... Like, you can see groups of people that all pick the same general design. Um, yeah. It'd be nice to have a little bit more, more variety in, in player looks, not only cosmetically, but physically. Like, maybe tweak up the uh, the uh, character customization system, which is admittedly still pretty good right now. It's really good. Um, yeah, I agree with you on that one. Yeah, so, I mean, some, some better, co- again, better cosmetics would be nice, especially because most of the game right now is trending towards social. So what yeah. a lot of people do, like Franny, is play dress up, you know, take screen, take cute screenshots, um, that kind of stuff. So right. some better, so, you know, some better newer generation cosmetics and even bringing back some of the older generations oh, ones, because yeah. what we didn't talk about was one of the more recent old gen scratches or collaborations they brought back. They brought back was the Attack on Titan one, which, which... was really awesome. Like. Yeah. Cool, they brought it back, but they didn't upgrade any of the cosmetics yeah. to NGS. It was still you could all... use them in NGS, yeah. but it would change you back to the base model type, <laughs> yeah. so they kind of looked weird. Like, I had Az dressed in, like, the scout armor, and ninja running in the scout armor looked weird. Yeah. Like, it kind of looked like I was ninja, like, bow-legged or something. Well, so the was, like, same hey. thing. I, I got the, the Colossal Titan suit, which I was ecstatic to finally get that. And then when I put it on, it reverted me back to my, my base PSO2 proportions, which are set way different, or, or translate way differently from my new Genesis proportions. I went from being, you know, like a super buff, like makes Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime look small kind of guy, to a butterball turkey. And, yep. And it's, it's yeah, I, I so like I still have the suit because, you know, I, I, I bought that, uh, uh, I know I actually pulled for that scratch. Um, so I still have it because I spent real world money on it. I don't think I'm ever going to use it again, except maybe Halloween. I might use it for. Well, the other problem is that uh, the other problem we haven't talked about is that the economy right now is still very much player led, and it is completely jacked. It is, yeah, well, because the... you basically sell everything for dirt bloody cheap. Um, like like and... okay, as, as far as like pickups in the world, even four star, unless it's got. Um, an affix on it, or not an affix, a uh, a fixa, a fi- fixa. There you go. Unless it's got some fixa on it, it's not worth anything. I mean, yeah, it's not. Cosmetics are where that's where you get your money is is buying and selling and trading. Well, not trading, but buying and reselling cosmetics or just selling it outright. Um, so I mean that's something that I mean that could use a little bit of balance. I think that's more of a long term quality of life thing. Um, I don't think that's anything that's going to get fixed right right away. That's something that I, I, if they do do that, I personally hope they put a lot of thought into it, because to either make your Meseta worthless, it's going to piss off people. To wipe banks back to zero, which somebody speculated that they may just do that, that's going to royally piss people off. So it's going to be a fine line of rebalancing how Meseta works or how the player shop works or things like that. It, it's it's a balancing act. So that's something that I hope they take time on. Um, apart from that, as far as quality of life things. A lot of what I want is stuff that was in base that they haven't brought over. I would love to see player housing make a comeback, especially since pretty much every other modern MMO has player housing. Um, I would love to see that come back. I would be okay if I couldn't use my old stuff, my old housing stuff. I would like that, but I would still be okay if they just brought it back with all new stuff. Um, And kind of uh, aside from that is uh, Alliance Quarters. Like, we still have ours. Uh, I think Franny goes and decorates it every so often for us and, and keeps it uh, going. But apart from that, I mean, if you're not playing base, there's really no purpose for it. Yeah, and that's one of the things is, like, you know, we have the Alliance Quarters. And we had talked about, you know, potentially getting together and doing, like, a, an Alliance, you know, like, Christmas event or something like that. Um, which is fine. Um, but, you know, we... We don't have, uh, and we'd have to go back to base uh, uh, if we wanted to use the alliance quarters, uh, or you know, we could get together uh, and stuff like that. But yeah. um, so, I mean, there, there's still, 
So if we want to sum up, we could say that NGS has come a ways. Yeah. Um, I don't, it's not perfect. Yeah. It's, it's not where people hoped it would be even several months after launch, but I don't think like a lot of the doomsayers, I don't think it's a lost cause. I don't think it's something that Sega's going to scrap because even on cosmetics, like Sega doesn't release their sales figures for this stuff. For good reason. I think if they put out how much money people really spent on cosmetics, it might make some people reevaluate their lives. Um, but you know they've got to be making bank just on cosmetics at this point, right? But yeah, I so mean they're not going to abandon it. Yeah, no, they're not going to they're not going to abandon the game, uh, and it still has time to bake in. Like, oh, yeah, we're kind of in that age of everyone wants gratification instantly. I think we did um, an episode but... on that. Yeah, I think so. One of our uh, early ones. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, there's still room to grow. There's still room to, you know, for the game to improve. And again, we're coming up on a new zone, expansion, content drop, DLC, yep. whatever we want to call it. Yeah. Um, so there's there's still some life left in it. And they're still obviously very much developing for the game. Yep. I mean, there's um, still uh, like multiple other regions that they haven't even touched on yet. I was hoping that the first one would be the snow region, just because I think that looks pretty. Um, but I'm not uh, disappointed right. that it's the desert. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. Um, there's a so they they have they've come a ways. Uh, I don't think they've come as far as they could have or hoped. To. Maybe even as far as they should have. Yeah. But they have made progress. They've made enough progress to keep me engaged and keep me entertained. Yep. Uh, and keep me logging in almost every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the reason I say almost is because sometimes I'm just bloody busy. Yeah, uh, so, I hear that. <laughs> uh, uh, so, you know, we're getting there. And we yeah. have a new content drop coming out. And we're very excited for the new content drop. Yep. We want to see this game succeed. Tim said it early on in the, in the episode. We don't want this thing to fail. Yeah. One, we've invested a lot of personal time and personal money yeah. into the game, yep. but we also enjoy it. We derive pleasure from it. And again, I'm not as social as Tim is. Like I interact with, um, you know, our alliance members. Uh, I interact with, you know, some people in general chat, but not a lot. Speaking of alliance members, uh, shout out to to John Wick. He's literally standing in front of me as I'm <laughs> in, on the game right now. Hi, Johnny. Um, hi, Johnny. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, and he's actually on, like, he's not just AFK, like there he's you. actually interacting. Oh, cool. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of potential. I mean, look at Fantasy Star Online 2, yeah. PSO2. It, it's a 10 year old game. Yeah. Like it lasted 10 years. And the, what people, especially in global don't, don't really like really comprehend is the fact that it took 10 years to get where it was yeah. when NGS dropped. Yeah. And there were expansions, there were chapters in, in, in base that almost ruined the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, there were. So you, you gotta give them a little bit of, of leeway here, folks. Yeah. Um, and that's just our personal opinion. Feel free to play. Feel free to not. It's your yeah. personal choice. Uh, you know, we are going to keep playing because we enjoy it. Yeah, we do. So, we do. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, any final thoughts uh, um, on on NGS? No, you know, I, I agree to you. I mean, it, it's I've been saying this since the uh, launch of it. It's got a lot of potential. They've got some great building blocks. It's just, it's all in Sega's hands at this point. It's in the hands of their developers, their marketing team, everybody there at Sega, to take that, that strong foundation and build something impressive on it. So, I mean, it's still as yet to see if they're going to build a grand castle, or a ramshackle meth shed. Um, I'm hoping for the Grand Castle, <laughs> personally. Um, but I mean, it they is... have that. They have that fight in in base. Remember you, you <laughs> the Castrum you, you... Demonica. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. like those fights. I, like a lot of people were kind of eh about them. I thought <laughs> until they were, I thought you they were fun. <laughs> until you accidentally got yeeted halfway across the map. It was still fun. Um, but no, I'm 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 looking forward to see, especially with this new um, this new expansion, because that's pretty much all they're focusing on right now. They haven't talked about any of their side stuff. They did kind of mention briefly um, that they're going to have like these big content drops roughly every six months, but then smaller content drops in between those. So it's, and they said it's going to be after Sandstorm Requiem comes out. So it's going to be interesting to see what these smaller content drops are um, beyond 
like seasonal events and things. So I'm, I am excited for the future. I mean, it's been an interesting six months for New Genesis so far. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to see where they go with it. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't know that there's anything else to say. We're, uh, I think Tim summed it up pretty well. We're excited. We're looking forward to where the game goes. We're getting looking forward to uh, the new content drops. We're looking forward to being able to experience this with each other, with yep. our friends, with our alliance members, with our token alliance members. You know who you are. Yep. Um, no. So, you know, yeah, we're we're excited. <laughs> we are. So, I think that about covers it. Um, anything else before we end, Mr. Timothy? No, I think that's about it. All righty. Well, I think that'll do it for us uh, today, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, time for me plugging everything, so please bear with me. Um, as always, thank you to Anchor.fm, our podcast hosting site, uh, which hosts all of our audio and feeds out to other sites, uh, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, and several other podcast providers. Uh, thank you to YouTube, uh, where you can find our video versions of this podcast. You can also occasionally catch us on uh, live streaming uh, some of these events plus maybe some of us playing around like actually just playing video games yeah. uh, catch us on twitch.tv slash or yes twitch.tv slash non sequitur nerds sorry I thought it was dot com for a second <laughs> um, uh, you can also find us on social media facebook.com slash non sequitur nerds and twitter.com slash non sequitur or twitter twitter.com at non sequitur nerd uh, sorry it's been a bit of a week yeah, um, yeah it has <laughs> Anyway, so I think with that, that's going to about do it for us. Uh, so. Looking forward to talking to you and seeing you again next week, uh, where we will be uh, preparing a review and uh, up to, uh, not really a review, but a a uh, preparation prequel coming up uh, review of uh, the next Final Fantasy XIV expansion, Endwalkers. Yep. Uh, because that will be releasing, I believe, the 19th really soon. of December? Really soon? Yep, I know. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Early and... access starts on the 3rd, I know that. Yes, early access starts on the 3rd. <laughs> and always looking forward to seeing you in Fantasy Star Online NGS, our new Genesis. Uh, you can find us typically in Block 1 or all over the place. Just look for the club. Block 1, ship 1. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, all righty. Well, thank you again, folks, and uh, thank you, uh, as always, from us. We look forward uh, to hanging out with you. So uh, I think that'll do it for us tonight. So, so uh, you know, we wish you all good night. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we hope you didn't get trampled in the Black Friday rush, uh, which I don't think is really much of a thing anymore, but, eh, yeah. you know, still. It is what it is. Uh, stay safe. So, yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, take care, everybody. Uh, have a good night, and we'll see you next week. Uh, for Non-Sequitur Nerds, I am Ian. And I'm Tim. Have a good night, everyone.